friends in churches. Yes. And the young people are, they're hungry and they're thirsty and they're not finding it in churches anymore because churches just want to be cool now. That's right. And God will be using his prophets and his people in the secular field to reach the people. Because as it said in that article, that young people are leaving the church and not going back. Because they said, we don't need more of the same by going to church that we have already in the world. What we need is something that's an alternate to the world. The world is not satisfying. And the church today has become more and more worldly. And they don't make a difference. And this nonsense, they tell people about putting five toes up in the air or five fingers up in the air or or look into my eyes and you're saved and all this junk that they say from the pulpit. It's just garbage. And it's just, I mean, a real thinking person, an intelligent person, is going to know that that does not do anything. And it's not even in the Bible anywhere. The, the pastor can't give you one single verse to back that up. The people are still in captivity, so God's going to put a stop to that and he's going to be setting people free. That's right. The pastors are controlling the people in the churches and the pulpits and the, and, and the teachers and the false prophets. They're controlling the people from the pulpit and making them think, this is how you're saved. And don't believe anybody that tells you different. And so people are not going to be satisfied and they're going to be constantly sinning. So the pastors have to tell them, we all have to sin. And, you know, they have no power. And the pastor has no power because he doesn't know. I remember a pastor telling his congregation that until he heard this woman's testimony talking about me, he said he thought he was born of God because he had raised his hand and asked Jesus into his heart. And you're supposed to just believe that. But he said after he heard this message and the words of Jesus, he did what Jesus said. And he said, now his spirit is within me. Now I pray and it really makes all the difference. And I'm in contact with God and it's a real relationship with God. It's not some religious junk, you know. But he told them. Amen. Well, CJ, I really, really appreciate this testimony that you've shared. And I do believe that people are going to hear this and they're going to be touched and they're going to be challenged. And they're going to go into their rooms and they're going to do business with God and find him. That's what it's all about. Amen. Now, are there any last words that you would share with the people? Make sure, make absolutely sure that you follow 100% total surrender to Jesus Christ. Completely and unconditionally surrender to him. Your will. If I was to say it's one thing, the one big enemy you have, worse than Satan, is your own will. So what you want to do is make sure your will is completely 100% broken to Jesus Christ. And make sure you read the Bible every day and pray every day, especially, especially in the morning. Okay? Well, sometimes, once in a while, if it's just an exception, you know, and you can't, then you do it at night. But the time to put your armor on is as you're going out to the battlefield, not at night when you're taking it off to go to bed. So make sure that you read the Bible in the morning so you have Jesus' presence with you all day long instead of just while you're sleeping. And you've got to do it so you can grow. Otherwise, you get stunted. And the Bible says that if you're grafted into the vine, I'm the vine, Jesus says, you are the branches. And the branch, if it doesn't get what it needs from the vine, you don't spend enough time with Jesus. What happens is the branch withers and dies. And then it's cut off. The Father will cut it off from Jesus, the vine, and it'll be cast into the fire and burned. So I say unto you, make sure your conversion is real, your repentance is real, a total surrender to Jesus Christ, and abide in Him and stay in Him. Praise God. My friends, God desires to be a shelter for all of you. He desires to pave His highway of forgiveness through your heart. And out there in the world, the briars and the thorns of sinful living are a heavy load to bear. You've had your turn. Where has it brought you? It's His turn now. And you know that you will have to surrender eventually to Him to reach for that higher milestone. Why not today? Why not right now? He loves you. God is not willing for any of you to perish. Receive Him. Holy Spirit, touch everyone listening. Show them how real you are. Have mercy on them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. He knew you then. He knows you now. Desire. 